What's up YouTube? I'm back again with another video. I haven't made a video in a very long time, I know, but I just want to actually come on here and thank all of my new subscribers to this channel. I think I have about 40 subscribers right now. Thank you very much for hitting that subscribe button and hitting that like button because that helps the channel to grow and I very, very much appreciate everyone's support. Um, today I want to talk about 10 things you need to know before you travel to Cuba. Number one, Cuba is a very beautiful country. Cuba gets a bad rap in the news today. The news media sometimes, especially the US news media, they sometimes paint Cuba in a bad light because of Castro and because of the communism, the actual regime. But Cuba itself is a very, very beautiful place to be. The people are beautiful, the place is beautiful, and if you decide to go there one day, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. For example, me and my few friends went downtown one day and we were hanging out on the Maricon. The Maricon is what is known as the sea wall. It's a long wall. I think it stretches for a few miles and at night you will see people down there dressed in costumes like, uh, like thousands of people at midnight, one in the morning, two in the morning, just for no reason just hanging out downtown at the sea wall and uh, they just sit on the sea wall. Some people smoke, some people drink people have fun I mean I don't smoke or drink but that's what people do and people have fun they hang out with their friends and you just sit by the seawall and relax and have fun and uh, that's one of the aspects of Cuba now this is in Havana that I travel to I've only traveled ever traveled to Havana so I only know about Havana but I heard about the countryside and the countryside is pretty beautiful as well number two the second thing I want to talk about in the list of things that you need to know before you go to Cuba is that that the first thing when you land and when you're trying to get your money is changed into the, the Cuban peso you need to know that your money is gonna be taxed 20% so the government takes off 20% of your money the right off the bat 20% is gone so you have to factor that in when you're actually thinking about changing your money or how much money you need to bring into the country so just keep that in mind that 20% of your money will be gone when you enter Cuba because you have to change your money into the local money so it's no getting around it 20% of your money will be gone I was very surprised when I found this out because I think 20% is a lot of money when you go there you will see exactly what I mean it might sound outrageous to you but it's true number three the third thing on the list that you need to know when you travel to Cuba is that I would advise you to try to learn some Spanish phrases before you go now Spanish is a very easy language to learn I myself know Spanish to a intermediate high intermediate level I also am learning French and I study both languages on my own so I would advise you to try to learn some of the Spanish language here's the reason why most Cubans do not speak the English language so so it'll be hard for you to try to get around when you're trying to get a taxi you don't want the taxi drivers to try to jiff you out of money and when you're at the stores and buying stuff out of the stores you don't want the store owners to jiff you out of monies as well so I would just advise you to try to get a Spanish phrase book and try to learn a few phrases in Spanish yo puedo hablar espanol también mi espanol no es bueno ahorita porque necesito practicar mucho más pero yo puedo hablar yo puedo Escuchar, no quiero leer todo lo cosas porque tengo muchos años practicando la idioma con personas de otro, otro países. <laughs> Number four. The fourth thing that you need to know about Cuba is that the hotels are very cheap. It's very cheap to live. So if you go to Cuba, it's not like going to another country where you have to pay over a hundred dollars for a night to stay in a room. In Cuba, you probably find hotels for around twenty-five dollars, thirty-five dollars, forty-five dollars a night. When I was in Cuba, I actually stayed with a family. So my experience with being in Cuba is that I've had to pay very little to nothing to actually stay for one night with a family I think I paid about $25 per night when I was staying there for like a week so it'll be very cheap for you like I said I haven't had experience with staying in a hotel but 
I'm pretty sure it's very very cheap to actually do so and in a very nice hotel as well you'll have to go online to see what they have and make arrangements yourself obviously but you can also make arrangements with a travel company as well so if you can do that it'll be very very convenient for you to not have to try to hunt and find a hotel for yourself a place accommodation to stay number five you will never go hungry in Cuba Cuba you always have places that sells a very very cheap food I mean dirt cheap you can get a pizza a, a whole pizza for under a buck for like from like a street vendor or someone who's like selling like vendors on the, on the street or anywhere like it's very very cheap to eat I don't know some people are bougie they don't like to eat from street vendors they don't like to eat from certain people but I mean if you're in another country you want to experience all that a country has to offer so I mean I would suggest that you, you at least try it but like I said you won't go hungry and cure Cuba. Even the Cuban people, they can get a monthly allotment of food and goods. So there's always something that you can eat. And for those Cubans who are watching this out there, you can definitely correct me if I'm wrong. Number six. That brings me to number six. Basically, Cuba is a communist country, meaning that the government owns a lot of Cuba, a lot of businesses, a lot of opportunities in Cuba, a lot, a lot of things, a lot of land, a lot of farms. The government owns a lot of the actual economy of Cuba so what this means is that you won't see a lot of US companies there McDonald's Wendy's Burger King uh, Walmart <laughs> all these big brand names in, in the US you won't find a lot of them in Cuba because the government owns a lot of the economy in Cuba they decide what businesses are in Cuba and they decide a lot, a lot of things about Cuba this is why a lot of the Cuban people feel oppressed because some of them can own businesses and if they own businesses there's a lot of red tape that they have to go through and even if they go through all of that they still might have not have full ownership of their businesses and of their opportunities in life so that's why you see a lot of um, people from Cuba trying to get out and even if Cubans want to travel outside of the country they have to let the government know and the government will give them a certain amount of time they can be out of the country for for example maybe two weeks or a month and after that they have to come back for my Cuban people out there you can correct me if I'm wrong about that number seven Cuban women are very beautiful now let me put a disclaimer out there when I was uh, out there in Cuba, I didn't mess around with any of the women there. But it's obvious, you can see everywhere around, Cubans have natural beauty. This is very important to know for the guys out there who are traveling to Cuba for leisure, I don't know, for pleasure, I don't know. I'm just saying, I don't know. Yeah, the Cuban women are very, very beautiful. If you're going out there to try to find a mate, you might be lucky, you might get lucky. Number eight, so when you travel to Cuba, it's very, very important for you to park your electronic items or any any personal items or anything that you deem important to you including your passport in your carry-on luggage now here's why I say that if you check your electronics in your check luggage you will have a lot of problems with customs so it's very important that you carry all of your personal items your important items in your carry-on because they don't check your carrier obviously they check it when they when you go through security but that's the only time they actually have to go through your luggage um, and your personal belongings will stay with you and you will know exactly where everything is so be very careful in that respect because a lot of people actually get stuff left in Cuba and stuff taken out of the bag number nine that brings me to number nine and this is a very important point be careful what you bringing back from Cuba now a lot of people go to Cuba and they want to bring back togies um, they want to bring back these things from stores you want to go to the farmers markets you want to go to trinket stores you want to go get a couple of souvenirs just make sure that you bring back things that are allowed into the country of your origin because you don't want to get into any problems with customs number 10 finally the final point is Cuban people are very friendly people once you get to know them they actually will be very opening to you we had a friend out there every time we went there he would carry us around he would show us around he would make sure we were safe he would make sure that we were going into the machinas with the taxis and the taxi drivers weren't charging us more than we were actually supposed to be charged he was looking out for us basically Cuban people are very 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 friendly people so do enjoy your time in Cuba I promise you it will be very fun be safe bye bye Everything's the day that you